Welcome back to Chem 4300. In this video, we finish up chapter 19 on magnetism, angular momentum, and spin. And now we're going to look at the transition selection rules for the hydrogen-like atom. So if you recall from the earlier chapter on radiating dipoles and quantum mechanics, we saw that transitions will occur between levels if this transition moment integral is non-zero. So here we have the electric dipole moment sandwiched between the wave functions of the two energy eigenstates that we're trying to connect with our transition. So in this case we're using the wave functions associated with the hydrogen atom and we're including the spin state, the electron spin state here also. Now to evaluate this integral we need the electric dipole moment for the hydrogen atom. If you remember how we calculate that, we know it's just a, a nucleus, positively charged nucleus and electron and that has an instantaneous dipole moment we can evaluate from their instantaneous positions of the proton and the electron. Now, if we do a little rearranging, if you recall that r is the relative distance, or you know, the vector that connects the electron and the uh, nucleus, then if we write down this expression here, then we can rearrange, put that into here, and rearrange that expression here into this expression, which then simplifies into this form, where here I have the parts of the dipole moment operator related to the nucleus, and here I have only the parts that related to the electrons position relative to the nucleus. So now I will put this form into this integral up here and you can see that when these go in we break up into two integrals and this part just involves the protons position and its charge and uh, of the nucleus and none of these guys are going to operate on the electronic wave function for the hydrogen atom so this will just sort of slide out of this integral and just leave you with the product of the two wave functions. Whereas this term down here is going to require us to operate on the wave functions before we can evaluate that integrand. So what that means is that, that this term is just going to go to zero because of the orthogonality of the wave functions and that leaves us only with this term to evaluate to get the transition dipole moment integral. So. That leaves us with this term. This is where we're going to focus our attention to get those selection rules. So taking this term and then where R now can be written in terms of, of spherical coordinates for that distance vector between the electron and the nucleus. Substituting this into there, and I'll leave this as an exercise, evaluating this, you will find that these are the selection rules for the transitions that are allowed for the hydrogen-like atom. Delta N can be any positive or negative integer. Delta L can only be plus or minus 1. If the, you're looking at the Z component of the, mag, of the electric dipole moment, then delta M can only be 0. So if the light is only interacting with the Z component, then it's a delta ML of 0. And then if it's interacting with the X or Y components, then delta ML can be plus or minus 1. And then you can see also that this doesn't interact at all with the spin part, so delta ms is always going to be equal to zero. And that's it for the selection rules. Uh, if we drew an energy level diagram, sort of having taking all of those corrections into account and more, then you would get a diagram like this, and these green lines would represent the transitions that would be allowed based on those selection rules. So, that's the end of this video. I'll leave you with a link here to a really nice video by Paul Falstad where you can look at what the shape of the orbitals look like as these transitions are taking place.